Hey everybody, welcome to a chemistry video lab. Thanks so much for being my lab partner. All right, so what we're gonna do today is we're going to demonstrate lab examples of physical and chemical changes. So you're gonna be able to see what's going on by watching um, the data and watching the lab. So the, imagine if that you were standing here with me in class being my lab partner, you would get sort of that same experience. Okay, so the purpose of this lab is to show the difference between physical and chemical changes. And we need to take some kind of data so I'm going to ask you to set up the data table. That's kind of the processing and kind of understanding lab a little bit better is by thinking about what data we might want to take. You have the procedure written down on your lab sheet so you kind of know what we're doing. So hopefully you looked ahead and kind of thought about that to set up your data table. If you don't have your data table set up, pause the video right now, set up your data table. Okay, so because I want to be able to show a change, it's important that I have a place in my data table for before and after. And the first thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to be using something with a piece of aluminum foil. So I've got my piece of aluminum foil here, um, and I can see that, you know, I'm just going to, I'm going to start with, okay, so this is my piece of aluminum foil. So I've got a piece of aluminum foil, so maybe that's what I start with. So I have my aluminum foil, and then I've got my data table. I want to measure, basically I want a place for like before and after. Now you can set up your data table in lots of different ways, but that's kind of what I want to see. Okay, so then I'm going to take a ruler and I'm going to measure it to the correct capability. So if I take a look at my, um, my ruler, my ruler is divided. I'm going to use the metric system. So I'm going to use centimeters and my metric system is divided into its centimeters but then there's the 10 little lines between each centimeters. So then I know that this is going up by 0 0.1, 2, 3, whatever, which means that I can read to two decimal, or I can read to one decimal place, I report two decimal places. So if I look at how wide this is, I see that it is, okay, so follow this along with me. So it's 12.68. 12.68. So 12.68 centimeters. Make sure you have labels on your numbers. So again, that 12.68 means that I could count 12.6. The 8 after it says it was close to 0.7, 12.7. Um, but I could be a little bit more specific than just saying, oh, it's about 12.7. All right. So that is the width. So then maybe I put that. So the width of my aluminum before. All right. Ready for physical change? Ta -da! Okay, so now I have two pieces. So after, now I've got two pieces. So there's a, an observation. I guess it's quantitative in some sense because I can count them. All right, but then now I'm going to measure them after. So now I'm going to do the width of them afterwards. So again, I'm measuring to the capability of my ruler. So I read the smallest division and I add one more decimal place after it to show that this ruler goes to two decimal places. Okay, so it looks like it is... Oh man, so one of the pieces is 7.91, 7.91 centimeters, I record that. And then the other piece is 6.60, 6.60. So remember that zero is significant because it means that I didn't guess the 0.6, I read on the ruler 6.6, .6. The zero says it was exactly on that line. That wasn't an estimation. So now there's a physical change. It's not super fancy, but it shows you this idea of taking measurements, taking observations, and then the idea is that this is still aluminum. So the physical change part is that there's no identity change. All right, let's do our second one. Okay, so I've got a beaker here. This is a 250 milliliter beaker, and I'm going to pour some water in it. The lab didn't say how much I needed to add, so I'm going to add about that much. Okay. And then it said to add, oh, it said to record the temperature. Okay, so then that's my next thing. So water, so the temperature before, let me get the temperature here. It's about room temperature, but let's see what our room temperature is right now. Uh, it's cooling down a little bit. So we record the temperature until it stops changing. And it looks like it's going to stop right on 25 Point zero. So again, I can, this ruler or this thermometer goes up by ones. So 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, that kind of thing. But then I want to say 25.0 to show that it is exactly on the 25. It's not past it. It's not below it. Exactly 25.0. Okay, then I'm going to add a couple scoops, it said, of my calcium chloride crystals. So, or sorry, copper two chloride. So copper two chloride crystals, um, they look like this. So that's the chemical, the well, water is my first chemical. Here's the other chemical that I'm using. So I'm going to do two scoops, like maybe like that. 
All right, and two scoops. All right, and then I'm gonna use my stir rod to mix that together. You notice that kind of, it looks like a color change, um, but it's just because the greenish blue particles are now spread out, so we get that blue. Okay, so then I see afterward that we've got blue water. Let's check to see if we have any temperature change. Mm, no. Yeah, so the temperature stayed the same when I added the copper two chloride, but we definitely got this color change. Now, here's the thing, though. Is this a sign of a chemical change, color change? Well, no, because these are greenish blue crystals, and now this is bluish water, or teal water. So this would not be a sign of a chemical change. It's just that these particles mixed in with the water particles, if I were to evaporate out the water particles, I would still have that copper two chloride sitting behind. Okay, so after I put the copper two chloride in there, so that's what we end up with. Okay, well... I don't know at this point though. Oh yeah, the next step said that we were supposed to add in the aluminum foil. Okay, so I'm gonna add the aluminum foil, just like crumple it just a little bit and see what I notice here. I don't know. Can you hear that? Do you see that happening there? Can you see the fizzing and hear the fizzing a little bit? And then maybe you see that the color, the bottom of the aluminum foil is changing a lot. Look at how different that looks. So aluminum foil. And then what else do you maybe notice? Do you see that steam rising? Ooh, that means I want to get my temperature change in here. Let's see what we notice here. Temperature change. Do you see that steam rising? Or maybe you see the beaker getting a little bit foggy. It would suggest that there's definitely something going on there. So yeah, do you see the fog on the beaker? Can you tell? All right. And then, yeah, I'm trying to get the temperature change. Oh, yeah, there's definitely a temperature change. Maybe you notice that there's some steam, some smoking a little bit. So there's a gas given off from the bubbles. I would record that. So I'm going to record that in just a little bit here. And definitely we're getting a temperature change. It's now like still going up a little bit. Oh yeah, it's still going up. Okay, so what you could be doing right now while you're waiting for me is record that we definitely saw the aluminum change from silver, so we would have to say that, silver, to now kind of like a brownish, rusty color. We would see that we would write down that there's um, observations would be bubbles, fizzing, steam, and then our temperature change looks like it's stopping now. Yeah, we got it all the way up to 34.9, 34.9. So 34.9 degrees Celsius, there's fizzing, there's bubbles, there's steam. So temperature change for sure, color change of the aluminum from silver to that reddish rust color. All right, now this idea, so we definitely saw a chemical change. We have at least three signs of a reaction, gas given off, temperature change, and color given off. No light um, and no precipitate. This isn't a precipitate, this stuff that you see sinking to the bottom. That's not a precipitate because remember the definition of precipitate has to start with two solutions that mix together. So definitely we're seeing something happen there. Let's see if we can see something a little bit more obvious. All right, so this would be, if you're thinking of a lab, things that affect your results, let's think about, well, what if I change the water? I'm gonna do a little bit less water. What if I change the aluminum, a little bit more aluminum? And what if I change the copper two chloride, maybe a little bit more copper two chloride? So I'm gonna put some of that in there. So a couple more scoops, a couple more scoops. So trying to make something interesting happen here. All right, let's stir that up, get that to dissolve. All right, so this was our first one. I'm going to actually take that out. It's not safe because it's so easy to tip over then. All right, and then I'm going to drop this aluminum in there. I don't want it to be too crumpled and see what happens. Okay, now we definitely notice that something's going on. Check that out. So definitely steam, definitely bubbles. Our temperature change at this point, let's let it go up for a while. So steam, you can see the condensation on the um, beaker. You can see steam, you can hear and see the bubbles. You definitely see a color change. And then it looks like we're getting up to 47, 47.2. 47.2 was our final temperature change. So definitely 
Just another version, another example of seeing that chemical change. Okay, so the idea here is that now you have seen lab examples of physical changes and chemical changes. We have the data to back it up. Now you're ready to write a lab report. So remember that this sheet that you were writing on, this is not your lab report yet. This is an example of just like taking notes, right? Like a worksheet. Now you're gonna take the parts from this lab report and turn that into a formal lab report, sorry, from this lab sheet, turn it into a formal lab report. There's a lab guide on Schoology that you can use to help you write your first formal lab report. Thanks so much for being my lab partner. I hope you enjoyed our lab. We'll talk to you later.